You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. Sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Well, welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 19th show. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but I am here to answer any questions that you have. You can call the show at 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And if there's any questions that you have for the guests that I have in studio, uh, again, you can call the show number 1-855-411-50. Right now in studio, I'm going to have a conversation with Frank Savali with the Cascade team, and we're talking about preparing your business for sale. Frank, thanks for coming back in studio. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And a little bit about Frank. Frank is retired Air Force officer, MS, MBA, and university professor. He is the past president of two publicly traded companies and previously awarded a retail franchise. In 2013, Frank partnered with his wife, Lisa, to enter into uh, the professional business brokering on a full-time basis. In April of 2004, they affiliated with Business Brokers Network. Their company, the Dev Group LLC, was based in Tucson, Arizona. As owners of the Dev Group, they were in charge of all aspects of business brokerage services for the company. Now, in the spring of 2007, Frank and Lisa joined the brokerage franchise to expand the company's operation across the Southwest region and to provide professional brokerage services to business clients in the state of Arizona, New Mexico, and Western Texas regions. And now, in 2012, well, not right now, but in 2012, they moved right here into the Seattle area and joined the Cascade team, where Frank Frank now practices as business and commercial broker for Cascade. His his diverse brokerage, teaching, and business coaching background affords him the opportunity to assist buyers and sellers in virtually all market segments. So again, Frank, we're having a conversation and sharing with my listeners for anybody that owns a business and uh, preparing that business for sale. So what is the most important concern when preparing a business for sale? The most important concern for anyone is trying to get their business ready for sale is to bringing up to bring up the value so that the business will actually bring what they want it or expect it to bring uh-huh. and uh, that uh, usually entails a couple of years of work in advance to make sure that your profits are up, your net operating income is up if that's if that's a determining factor, and that you can list a business for what you really want to see from it and so just like if you're selling a home, I mean you want to make sure it's in in the best. Uh, shape, unlike a home. Now with a business, you've got all the financials as well. You need to make sure that it's looking um, uh, ready to go. So what about the process for buying and selling a business? Well, we use a uh, eight-step process that Lisa and I developed over the years mm-hmm. for transferring a business. And um, we call it our, our process for a successful business transfer. And I'll just quickly run through these. Okay. Uh, the first one is prepare a detailed offering package, which means making sure the business actually does have that value and it's ready to be offered to the public. The second one is to prepare a business valuation. We do a business valuation on every business that we list. The reason for that is because we want to know that the value is there so that we can effectively market it at that value. We develop a marketing plan. We then begin to implement that plan and contact potential buyers. We negotiate the offer and the purchase with a letter of intent. Uh, We conduct a, a due diligence process with either side or both. And we arrange financing and funding. And when I say arrange that, I mean we put people in contact with with the right um, bank or funding arm for a particular business that is different for every every entity. Mm-hmm. And then we attend the closing and arrange the transfer at the end. So that's kind of the process. So you're doing all the all the eight steps and getting them hooked up and exactly what they need to do do to be successful during the process. Exactly. And who should they have on their team during the business? Transfer well. Obviously, the the owners, mm-hmm. uh, the key the key players in the business have to be there. Um, obviously, an accountant if they have one, an attorney if they have an attorney. If not, we try to find those for them to help us with with the numbers. Um, and then a banker. A banker is always important. And if they have a broker, or if or if they need a broker, we can fill that role as well. Got so, it. So, first question I asked you is, uh, you know, the concern is people what they need to be cautious of, and the and it's the value. So, how is the value of a business determined, Frank? Well, there, we, there's three value valuation methods that we use. There are many, many methods, but the three that we use are the multiple of seller's discretionary earnings, and we mm-hmm. talked about that the last time, where 
discretionary earnings or the sales discretionary earnings are literally the profit, the net net, add, with adding back the owner's salary and the um, any perks they may have, whether it's their cell phone, mm-hmm. their car, um, insurance, whatever, that gets added back in. That becomes the SDE. And every business has a different multiple. So um, one business may have a multiple of SDE of two, and another one may have a multiple of SDE of 10. And that's mm-hmm. been determined over years and years and years of of study to find out what those multiples are. Um, a gentleman by the name of Tom West developed a what's called a business reference guide, and he's over about 40 years, he's, he's calculated out what those multiples are generally turn out to be okay. in a business transfer. The other is the buyer's test, and that's really the same thing that the SBA, the Small Business Administration, mm-hmm. uh, runs when um, when you go to get an SBA loan. And you're, you have to meet, meet a certain threshold before they'll provide that loan. We run the same kind of calculation to make sure that you can hit that threshold. Okay. So that's one of those. And the last one is a market method. And it's basically the same thing as comps on a house. Okay. So we're looking at your business against other businesses of the same size, same income, and same uh, profit to make sure that they're we're in the right, right ballpark. Got it. So are there things that a business owner can do or where you can help in maximizing that – uh, the value on the property, what can they do to list it at a higher uh, price? Well, getting rid of excess inventory is always a, a good one. Uh, most businesses over years will ac- will accumulate excess inventory or ex- okay. excess furniture, fixtures, and um, equipment. So getting rid of that initially, selling it off, getting rid of it helps a lot. The other is to um, start looking at your personnel. And if you have personnel, like uh, just as a first example, uh, we sold a business in Tucson once that had a um, had a family member on a payroll uh-huh. that literally did nothing. So we wow. had to, we had to take that. Out. <laughs> you had to take that out of there so it looks so more profitable. <laughs> right, right. So you know we, that's one of the things that we have to do. We have to make sure that we have the right numbers and and uh, but getting rid of the waste uh, and and then looking at ways to improve the profit, cutting mm-hmm. your cost, increasing your prices, those kind of things. That'll that'll bring the value up and make your business worth more. So like a lot of things that we do in our our business, hiring a coach or a mentor or consultant, somebody that uh, really is an expert in that area, is is it wise and is that something a business owner can do to hire a consultant or a coach to help them to increase that value on their property? It's just like any other coach or Uh advisor. Um, You know, when uh, when you're having issues losing weight, you go find a weight loss coach or if you you have a problem with your car, you go to see a mechanic. The bottom line is, is that, yes, um, finding a good business coach, finding an advisor to help you bring that value up is is will pay for itself many times over in most cases. Got it. Okay. And what about the difference between a business appraisal and a business valuation? Well, business appraisals are a long, drawn-out process, and, and they're necessary for large businesses, millions of dollars okay. um, uh, that, that will sell for millions of dollars. And it's a long drawn out a process. It's very expensive, very expensive. In that, mm-hmm. it's um, you know the the cheapest one I've seen has been like fifteen thousand bucks. Okay. So it's just a, a, a and and they go through everything. Uh, and, uh, so you're hiring uh, different consultants for different areas, um, and and uh, making sure that what's on that bottom line or on those balance sheets and and P and L's are absolutely accurate. Mm-hmm. A business evaluation is is a much shorter review of the finances to try to determine value. Okay. Not going through every nook and cranny of the So of is the that business. like that's the the first part of it? To see where you're at. Got it. Um, So determining uh, if their business will sell, is there something that a business owner can do to get an idea of the market, get an idea of their company, just to see if it's um, if it might sell? Well, uh, most businesses uh, will sell over the long term. Okay. Long term meaning multiple years, many years. Yeah. Or they'll be transferred to a family member or to a, a relative or something like that. But just for some statistics on business sales, businesses that do under $750,000 in sales have a one in five chance of selling. So under 20%, honestly. Really? Wow. Sales under 750,000, you said. In sales, right. Businesses that have sales of 750 to 2 million have a one in four or 25% chance. Sales from 2 million to to, um, 30 million uh, will, I'm sorry, from 2 million to 6 million have about a 29% chance of selling, mm-hmm. and sales of 30 million or more have a one in three or one third chance. So Really? Yeah, it's, that is surprising statistics. I know, it's crazy, isn't huh. it? it? It's crazy. But that's true, and we, we run across that all the time. The What makes a business sell is getting the the 
um, marketing out to enough people across the country and even mm-hmm. across the globe um, to make to find an attractive buyer. Well, I'd imagine across the globe is important because there's a lot of people coming in exactly. to our country to take advantage of being an entrepreneur. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and we use different databases that send uh, information everywhere. We get calls from China, Dubai, mm-hmm. the U.K., um, all over the place as a result of, what, of how we list these businesses. For Got sale. it. So what about the time that it takes to, to sell on a, a typical um, successful process? The uh, fastest mm-hmm. uh, that we've ever done was about six weeks, start to finish. That sounds pretty crazy. It was crazy, mm-hmm. uh, but it worked. And, and most of them between six and 12 months is what you're looking for. Okay. Seldom, if you get to two years, you can pretty much bet that you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. Okay, yeah. Now I would imagine uh, Frank having great representation um, on on your side and representing that that actual sell is a, a big part of the process in finding buyers. Is that are are you the one that really it's connecting with that role tour or how else are they finding buyers? Well, family first. Mm-hmm. Uh, see if you can find a family member who's interested. Uh, secondly, in your community. Um, mm-hmm. If you live in a small community, put the word out. Uh, if you have a broker, the broker is going to go to the world. He's going to okay. try to find, um, honestly, he's going to try to find a buyer no matter where they come from. But he's going to look at those buyers and make sure they're they're good for the business and good for the community. Okay. So hiring a business uh, broker. Would you ever sell a business and not hire a business broker to represent you. Well, I am one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to that question is no. Yeah. No, okay, how, say you're not one. I mean, why would you? It's, well, it's like selling your house. I that, mean, you know, you look at all the statistics with for sale by owner. I mean, you really, if you want to maximize, you need to have an expert. It's the same difference. It's yes. exactly the same mm-hmm. difference. If you if you want to sell it, hire a good broker, get yep. the word out, and and. and let them let them manage it for you. Because Makes total sense. You honestly, a business owner doesn't have the time nor the expertise well, to actually to manage a business. Sell. Those are the two key things. It is time and it is expertise. So list out as we wrap up my time with here you uh, here Frank. What is what is the broker doing for uh, the owner? Well, the broker, the eight steps that we talked about earlier. Yes. The broker is key in in fundamental in every one okay. of those steps. So okay. He's taking the 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 leadership role in every one of those and. It's from preparing a business for sale all the way down to getting it closed and uh-huh. you know finding the banks, finding the funds. So the broker is taking the lead role. He's captaining, captaining that ship, if you will, to make sure that Love the process that. starts and it ends in the way it should. Makes total sense. Frankie, th- Frank, thanks, sir. Frankie, I called you Frankie. Frank. <laughs> I was caught. Yeah. Wait till Lisa hears that one. Frank, thanks for coming back in studio. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to have a conversation. And get your wife in here. I'd love to love to have her in here with you. So, well, she, Lisa, I'm saying this online, so I expect to have you here next time. Well, she's been very, very busy with uh, commercial deals. Uh, yes. Five to 25 units. And, yeah. Uh, it's keeping her very busy. But, yes. You'll we'll let her, her know. Yes. Thanks again, Frank. Coming up next on The Money Hour, are you smart? Smart and safe with your financial invents, investments. Tony Sablon with New York Life Eagle Strategies right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break.